We are sharing a moment with Colonel Sanders as we hold a spork together. Look at his face, he's winking at us, oh my. Your eyes lock, the moment is electric, time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up when you see Ashley with a sinister look. She, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Oh god, wh why would you do that? Why? Then, Van, do something! Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold it right there, Mel. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. No, we're in trouble. Can I have potatoes, face? Van Van rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes gravy? Pathetic! In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty braised tentacle of octopus in my silky salt water sauce, plated plated on a battle axe forged by my supreme chef ancestors. I mean, wow, that is that is kind of impressive. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have first bite, and you will look on with envy. We don't even know who this person is. He has no name. Maybe he's the secret savant chef. I don't know. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic! Too late! It has been eaten. I, uh, think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It killed him! <laughs> uh, yeah, he's dead alright. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Everyone step back, don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice this you notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Oh no, we're gonna have two ghosts now. Pop winces in pain for just a moment then almost immediately back to his ob oblivious self. Oh, he's fine. Oopsies. Tastes like poison. The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. Um, but you know, that other student is still dead. I'm not sure if the professors here make enough money. Ghost of student. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. Oh my. <gasps> I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. Oh, Colonel. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Oh, my heart is fluttering. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today? Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. 
They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Oh, Colonel. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. He's got tears in his eyes. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Mel? There's... there's something I need to tell you. <laughs> Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef in the world has ever seen. And every day since, I've been working towards that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also lifting a lot of weights. Like, so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Oh, Colonel, you're so poetic. Hey, no, are you? Shut up, I'm, I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Hmm. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Oh, poor nameless guy. Forget him, we're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I am the hero. Whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> I was not expecting this. Ah, uh, it's a spork monster. Mmm, e exactly how I pictured it, with many eyes and many sporks for teeth and a nugget-like body. The spork monster is here to fight a hero. <gasps> I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Oh, really? Be afraid, be very afraid of me because I'm a monster, see? Is he rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further... It's a turn-based fight sequence, of course. Of course, we need one of those in every dating sim. What will you do? Oh my, what? Okay, I guess we attack. It's a spork monster. Kill it. Kill it with fire. We decide to go on the attack. Which attack will we use? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. It just got real. Please, please end it now. That attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Oh, okay. Uh. I guess we keep attacking. Does it go for attack? It worked last time, right? Cook with more love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork Monster won't forget this. Spork Monster is really feeling threatened by your attack. Spork Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will we respond? Uh, is he probably charging up for attack? So let's defend. You decide to defend. Is he my mashed potatoes? Seriously. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You hold your head between your hands and mutter, This is not happening. This is not happening. Spork Monster is no quitter, buffed up and ready to rumble, it go on the attack once again. Spork Monster uses Utilitensile. You take two damage from the attack. If you take too mu if you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Oh, I goddamn don't know. Okay, I guess we keep attacking. One of us is gonna go down eventually. We decide to go on the attack, we're gonna cook with more love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork monsters oozing cheese saws onto the squawn of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork monster prepares for his ultimate attack. Rounded edge. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Oh, he's gonna use his pimp staff. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of 1,000 chickens. Oh my 
god. <laughs> okay, this is getting good. I like this. I like where this is going. His shirt is slowly becoming more and more undone. Pot pie power pinch! Pot pie power pinch does 10 damage. Oh wow, Colonel. Spork monster is defeated. You... you saved me! An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. Forget mercy, finish him or spare this wretched beast? <laughs> I don't know. What even is he? He could be our school mascot. Let's spare this, this beast, this wretched, wretched beast. I mean, Colonel could take care of him all on his own if he decides to double cross us. You manage to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Uh, I think they always do that in animes. They like, give them a second chance to start all over. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back like you said. The sport monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item! It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. I don't know what to expect anymore. I was not expecting that. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have it to have signed it out is Borko. Hmm. A professor? Borko, that name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. Oh, hold me, senpai. <gasps> Senpai's in our bedroom. Why? The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you're tucked in tightly. Good night, my Colonel. <laughs>